I've done an album, it's called Henkel Teddy Bear. And what I'm doing, and the reason I'm doing it, is because when we were making this record, there was a feeling about this particular record. Unlike any record that I've ever done, and I, I'm an old guy, unlike any record that I've ever done, there was a feeling of this kind of inspiration. There was a, a, a feeling of musicians of, we're working on something really special. And everybody, it's not that they don't try hard all the time, but you could get a sense that everybody kind of looked at each other and would say, wow, you know, I, I, don't, I think what we're doing is fantastic. And, they, and everybody just kind of dug in that much more. And it was a very happy, I, I, I don't want to say spiritual, but because eh, that's kind of me. Eh. Um, but it was a very positive, positive atmosphere in this recording studio. And in my experience, I've never had a positive atmosphere in a recording studio. I've had, you know, a few laughs in a recording studio. I've done some good stuff, but never had this really positive attitude. So the record finished. The record is finished. Uh, we go to mix it. The mix, the guy who's mixing it, Chris Lauren Algae, he gets, you get that feel, he starts to listen to it and goes, wow, this is like, wow, okay, let's, let's get this. You take it to the mastering guy, Ted Jansen, who's, you know, mastered uh, from Springsteen to Elton to Zeppelin to, you know, any, any artist that you might love, I guarantee you this guy's mastered him. And to hip hop, to rap, to jazz, to rock, to pop, to Justin Timberlake, whoever. Uh, and all of a sudden he hears it, and he all of a sudden he gets this thing about, wow, wh wow, you got something's going on here. So all of a sudden you, oh, well, let's do this, and then, and he wasn't so blasé. So I said, I got this thing, and I said, you know what? I have to convey. I have to take and go myself and do something that no artist has ever done before. I have to go and I have to take this record and I have to sit with people. I have to sit with the record company. I have to sit with journalists. I have to sit with media people. And I have to get them to experience the same feeling that we have and that we had with this record. Because the record itself, I know I call it a record, but a CD. Um, the record itself, when you hear it, will give you that. So they see how I've kind of got, I've kind of like Peter Pan, got my youth back. And to pass along that feeling to, excuse me, to a journalist, and who in turn, or a media person, who in turn might pass it on to a, 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 a reader or a, a, a viewer of a, of a website that they could pass along that kind of feeling and then it might inspire you to, I don't care if you've hated me, you don't like my music, you think I'm a clown, you think I'm a, uh, I suck, I don't care, I really don't, it doesn't make any difference because that's what makes the world go round. But, it, even if you think that, it might inspire you to go, hmm, maybe this could be different. And maybe I could give this a moment. Maybe I could try to see what this is about. I uh, don't know if you will, but just thought it might be worth a shot. So no other artist has ever done what I've been doing, and I'm doing it around the world. I'm sitting with everybody and presenting this and explaining what we have. Now I'll explain to you this Hang Cool Teddy Bear. Hang Cool Teddy Bear uh, is an album. Now you say, why call it Hang Cool Teddy Bear? Exactly, because you ask why. And that's exactly why I did it. Because everybody goes, huh? Because, you know, I could be Sister Maria and the Long Road Home, or I could be, you know, so-and-so and my moment of truth and so, and you know, welcome to my world and come on down and get some or, you know, let's party or any of that kind of, I'm sorry, they're boring people. They're really boring. They're not inspiring and they're boring titles and they don't mean anything. Hang Cool Teddy Bear at least got you to ask the question, what? 
All right, Hank Gold Teddy Bear, the whole album is about a short story. It's about a soldier who is dying, and instead of his life flashing backwards, what they say that happens when you die, his life flashes forward into different scenarios of what could happen in his life. Now, you don't need to know that story to enjoy the record, but if you do know the story, and you start to listen to the record, and you listen to it more and more, you're going to see how all the it's not literal. You see how all the songs start to tie in and talk to each other and speak to each other in the same way that if you're playing a video game, you have cookies, <laughs> I believe is the correct term. So this album is full of cookies. And, and, and it's like you, everybody wants the adventure in the movies. Everybody wants the adventure in their video game. Nobody is giving you the adventure in, anymore in music. Well, I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to give you that adventure. I call this a video game for your mind. There's a lot, of, but most, I have a lot of people with me, but they're all my friends. I have Jack Black singing with me. I have Hugh Laurie, uh, who's an actor on the, on the series House. I have Cara DiGuardia, who's a judge on uh, American Idol. I have Steve Vai, who's a friend of mine. Brian May, who's been a friend of mine for, uh, you know, I was friends with Brian and Freddie and, and, and uh, um, uh, oh, okay. Roger uh, since the 80s since you know long before Freddie died and so Brian's been a friend Brian's sitting with us on stage in London and and in Vegas and I've sat in with him and and so we you know he, they're, they're, but they're my friends and and that's the great thing about having friends that are real people because they you know nobody comes with their managers and their press agents and their entourage and their bodyguards Everybody drives on their own in their own car, parks their car, gets out, walks in the studio, goes, I'm ready to work, let's go. And um, so, and everybody came and when they, and again, when people walk in and they start hearing what we're doing, everybody kind of, the light comes on in people's eyes. Like when Jack came in and he heard the, what, what he was doing, he's singing on a song called Like a Rose, he went, wow, whoa, okay. And you see, I mean, you know, you got a guy like uh, Jack Black, he, he's coming in as a guest star. He doesn't have to really give me everything he's got, but he did. Cara DiGuardia, four or five times she's in the studio. She's writing, we're rewriting. She's singing, she's singing it over, she's singing it over again. Uh, Hugh is in there going, you gotta let me do it again, you gotta let me do it again, you gotta let me do it again, you gotta let me, you know. The string arranger, in, uh, for, because we have a beginning of the record, I can tell you, I'll give this to you. The beginning of the record is is an orchestra, but it is I what I did was I asked to create the sounds of war through an orchestra. So you hear the cannons, machine guns, different things, but it's an orchestra plant and uh, and an anvil. <laughs> and so um, and the the string arranger it just was that it was that kind of inspiring thing. And and, and the producer Rob Cavallo is the best producer in the world. He allowed me to have my voice 100% and never allowed his ego to come into play. So what you have is my vision beyond my wildest expectations. And, and Rob, if I would ask Rob, well, how do you, um, how, how about that? Yeah, that's great. How about that? That's great. How about I do that? That's great. Whatever you think works, great. Let's do it. And then, you know, I'd go, I'd go, I don't think that works. He goes, no, I don't think so either. So it was like, that was what it was like. So, uh, it, and I, I said, I've never had a good experience in a studio until this one, and I really loved it. And the record, and I, okay, I have just, uh, who else I have? I have Justin Hawkins from The Darkness In. I have young writers by the name of Rick Brantley. I have James, um, James Michael from a band called 6 AM. I have... Uh, uh, Jake Shearer in another young artist whose album's coming out in June. Um, I have my daughter Pearl, whose album is out right now. Who Pearl just got voted the sexiest rock chick in Revolver or something. And so I, you know, I had my band Randy and Paul, and I, and it literally, and I think now he will be known finally as the best drummer in rock and roll, John Michelli from this record because somebody let him play. Rob Cavallo let him play and 
and if he's not on the cover of every drum magazine in the world, then something's just wrong. Because drum, and if you're a drummer, you need to listen to this record. You need to listen to John Michelli because you'll be going, oh my God. Trust me, if you're a drummer and you look at this, listen to this record, not for me, listen to it for John Michelli and the drums because you'll be going, oh my, oh my. How, wow, how, whoa. I believe me. What we've done and, and what, what I did, and that's my thing, is like, uh, on every song, and bar, not, there's not one that it doesn't happen to. Every time that you think we're going to take you one place inside that song, I take you someplace else. Every time you go, oh, I, because you've heard all these songs before, and you hear people do this kind of style or this kind of thing, and they get to that spot in the song, and then you hear that, and then all of a sudden it goes to right, and you're so it's so predictable that every time, every time that I get to those spots, you go, oh, I know where you're going, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you go, whoa, what happened? You think we're going to end a certain way? We don't end that way. You think this, that we're going for? Oh, it's the bridge, and we're going to here. We don't go there. You think, oh, it's got to go here. Oh, it doesn't go there. Oh, and you think it's going to? Nope, doesn't do that. And that is on purpose. That is very calculated, and that is that is the complexity of my mind. <laughs> and when I'm let loose, and nobody is there to bar me or stop me from letting me have my voice, that's what you get. You get the unanticipated moment all the time. Uh, we call this, uh, uh, when I listen to this strong music, uh, I feel that you push the classic rock up to the level of uh, heavy metal. Very uh, up to there. Yeah, it's it, it's pushed to, it's really edgy and it's pushed very modern and it's pushed very, it's pushed to the edge of metal. Yes, it is. But at the same time, as I, you get through, you get through the song uh, seven, and I I push the limit to of, of of right to the edge of heavy metal, and then I again, just when you think you're going someplace, I flip it on you, and I give you something completely That's true. out in uh, we we've left the car park and gone into the building, and. Uh, it, 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 you're not anticipating that I'm going to take you the direction that I take you, and um, and and then I will turn it around. And there's uh, there's a band called Switchfoot, which I wrote with. The, we had the guy come in and and he wrote something, and I had him you know work something out. And, and there's a whole, that's a completely different style for me, uh, very very modern, um, and. Uh, but I, I, I adapt my personality to these tracks and make them really very dramatic. And, and, and uh, so it, it's, 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 it's the most important record of my career. And I, I've never been more proud of anything. It, you know, Bad Out of Hell was the first record that was extraordinary. And, I, you know, uh, Jimmy and I were incredibly proud of that and we had a tremendous, you know, that was a tremendous partnership with Jim, myself and Todd Rundgren and made that record. But that was a partnership and, and you know, everybody worked together and Todd put his in thing and I put mine in and Jim put his stamp in, you know, major stamp into it. And then this one, this one, this one belongs to me. This is my stamp. That's 100% me. Yeah. Uh, will, will we see you, uh, have you plans for coming to uh, I have no idea. All, uh, my plans right now are doing nothing but I'm promoting this record and I'll promote this record till I die if I have to because it is just that good. And I, and I know everybody will sit and tell you all oh, the record's good and this but no I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not I'm not lying to you. I'm really not lying. Um, it's a very special record and and I, I you can see, look at my just Look at my eyes. I'm telling you. All you have to do, you want to know the truth about something? You look in somebody's eyes and you can always see the truth. And, I, I'm, and it's right here. And I wish I was hooked up to a lie detector because you can see that too. 
They, uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm really not kidding you. And I, you know, people out there are going, oh well. Uh, yeah, I can hear them, but I don't care. It's really great.